It's that time of the week once again. This week we're diving into Lightroom Classic and we look at all the different tools at your disposal to help you remove little little things from your photos, right? There's always a little reason you might want to do it. You don't always have the control to be able to exclude things from the frame. And sometimes you just, you just want to tidy something up. We're going to look at all the different ways you can do it, the different tools, what they're good for, how they work, and actually just how easy it is. These days, really, it's never been easier than it is now to just clean up a photo. We're going to start with some easy stuff and move all the way to some pretty difficult stuff as well. Let's dive in, but first, we're gonna roll that intro because... It's Tutorial Tuesday! <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each of each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new... Fresh... Photography tutorial. I've already told you what we're talking about. Let's just dive in to Lightroom. We're gonna start by looking at this photo and how we can remove these people over on the kind of left side of the frame here just to kind of clean this up. Now, there's two things to point out first of all. The best way to do this really is just to be patient at the time of taking the photo and try and get it as correct, right, to whatever you want it to look like as it's possible to get it in camera. That's always the best way to do it and patience can really pay off, but you don't always have either the time or the full control. The second thing is that really it's fine. Those people are absolutely fine in the photo. We don't need to take them out, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to tidy this up. So first up, we're going to come to just below the histogram here where we've got our different sets of tools. We're obviously in the editing tab. There's the crop overlay. And then next to that, we've got this remove tab here as well. And there we've got the three different tools that we can use inside of Lightroom. We've got the remove tool, we've got the heal tool, and we've got the clone tool. Now, most of the time we're going to use the remove tool, right? This is going to let Lightroom actually go in and and try and do it pretty much for us. We just show Lightroom what we would like to remove. Lightroom's gonna fill it in. We've got a few other options here as well. So that's what we're gonna start with. Let's actually zoom in. So I'm gonna hold space bar and click, and then I'm actually gonna hold space bar and click and drag so that I've zoomed in and I've now got these people here. So let's start by just actually using the remove tool as is. None of these are ticked on and let's see what kind of job it does. Let's say we wanna remove this sign as well. So I'm just using the mouse scroll wheel to make the actual cursor here, the circle bigger or smaller. I'm gonna click over the sign there and you can see that Lyrum has immediately just done that. Actually, it looks really good as well. I'm gonna do it over these people here and it's done not as good of a job, right? You can immediately see there's a little bit of a little bit of something going on there. Let's do it over these people here as well. What Lyrum's trying to do is work out what's around and just fill in that area with kind of what it can see, right? So for example, here, we've got little bits of what looks like the plant just floating in the air. Now we can click on this particular little bit, right? This little remove area that we've done and we can move it. That's actually gonna refresh it. So you can see it's done a better job, but it has kind of cloned these plants over to here. Now it might not be the end of the world. You probably would never realistically even notice it, but you might not be perfectly happy with that. Let's just carry on and do this again. So we'll get rid of this guy here. That's actually done a reasonably good job. And then we'll get rid of these people over here as well. Again, we might wanna just go in and move that. By moving it, we are basically refreshing the selection. We might wanna have just selected a larger area. You know what? I can click on that one, press delete. I'm gonna do a little bit of a bigger selection over these people. Okay, again, it's not ideal. There's a little bit of a smudge there, but if I was to zoom out now, so space bar and click again, and actually come off the remove tab, that's actually not bad at all. I mean, you would probably now never realistically notice those areas that we've done that. So actually, that was pretty easy. That was pretty straightforward. However, we have got more control over how Lightroom does this, right? So what we've done there, Lightroom is basically taking other parts of the image and filling in those areas that we've selected. That's great, right? And that is one version of this tool. Let's go to a different photo and we'll use the slightly more involved version of this tool. So, okay, similar kind of situation here. We wanna get rid of some of these people that are actually on the beach. So let's just, let's just zoom in. You can see it's a lovely sunset. This is down at Berlin Gap in Sussex. And absolutely, you will always find at least a couple of photographers, as you can see, at this time of day in that location. And fair enough. But let's say we want to remove them from the scene. Let's go back into the remove tool here. This time we're going to click on the little tick box here that says use generative AI. And essentially, 
This is going to let Lightroom use Adobe's generative AI to actually create a whole new area in the area that we select. And what this is going to do is generally give us a better result. It gives us a few more options for what is actually in that area. We can also refresh it much more easily, and it's not cloning anything else. So the issue we have with the plant, we're not going to have that again. Let's go ahead and select over, over this guy here. Uh, just make sure to get the shadow as well. That's quite important. So we've got the area there. Now, what's slightly different this time is Lightroom is not just going to do it. It's going to allow us to actually select multiple areas if we want to at once. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just do that one as well. And we can now go in and actually click remove, right? So we can basically add or subtract from the mask that we're creating here. And once we're happy with it, we click remove. That's what we're going to do. Now, it takes a little bit longer. Lightroom's going to work out how and what's best to put in those areas. But essentially, it's generating this completely new imagery to add into those areas. So if we take a look here, Lyrum has successfully removed the photographer over here. I think that looks really good. But what it's done over here is actually added in something a little bit weird. It almost looks like it's added in a bit of a tree or something. However, with this tool, we have a little bit more control. You might see that down here, it now says variations one of three, right? So I can now click variation two. Variation three now gives us exactly what we wanted, which is just the photographer removed and the beach is nice and clear. Now that's really useful, right? Lightroom gives us three versions of what it's created so we can pick the best one because it knows that it's not always going to be completely accurate. If none of those are particularly suitable, we can actually just click generate again and it will do it again for us. Now I'm gonna move over here to some of these other people. Let's go ahead and click and click. Just make sure that we've got the shadows in there. That's actually really important because otherwise, you know, we're telling Lyrum that we want something that's going to match up with those shadows. Not ideal. So let's click remove again. Lyrum's going to do its thing. This time, variation one looks absolutely fine. We could move over to variation two if you want to just check them out. Actually, that looks great as well. And variation three is nice and clear. So I think that that looks great. Let's go variation three. This one over here is a separate mask. So we can actually click on this one. And then variation two, variation three. I quite like variation two. But if I go back to just the editing tab now, and I press spacebar to zoom out, you can see we've now got a nice clear beach. If I press the backslash key, you can see before, this is before with the people, and then after we've just removed them successfully from the frame. And we've got a nice clear beach. Now, the downside of using generative AI like this is that now, if you actually look over this part where we've removed the, the photographer here, if I look at the before, and after, so here you can see some of these rocks are now, that's not real. That's, so it's not a completely true representation of Berlin Gap. It's not a completely true representation of what I saw and what was there. So, you know, there are ups and downs, right? If you want the clear beach, I mean, realistically, if you're hanging this on your wall, you're probably not going to really notice it. If you just want to clean it up like that, I think that's fine. But if you want it to be as true to what you saw as possible, we might want to go down a different route. Let's investigate one of those routes now. So if we go back into the remove tool, what I'm going to do is actually click on each of these and just press delete to get rid of them. We're going to zoom in. Uh, let's start with this guy here. So actually, let's come over to the clone tool, which is where we can essentially actually just, just clone stamp one area of a photo onto another. So in this case, we can now paint, and then I can move this around just ever so slightly, so for example, like that, there are some issues with this, right? If I actually come off the remove tab back to the edit tab, so you can see more clearly, you can see where the edges are of what we've just done. It's not ideal. Now, if I come back into the remove tab, you're going to be able to see that we have got a couple of different sliders for how this works. So let's go ahead and click on that and delete it. Okay. So I deleted that clone stamp. We're going to do it again, but this time we're going to do it a little bit differently. So we're going to take from an area that's a bit further away. So it's a little bit less obvious that it's been cloned over. And we're going to use a feather. So let's bring the feather up to something like 80, right? Or 75. Let's try 75 and see how we feel about that. Let's just uh, make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to go ahead and just paint in like this. Now, for the actual area that we're taking from, actually, it immediately looks not that bad. But we're going to just move this over to something like, something like here, right? And then I'm going to try and move this a bit just to match that up. And how does that look? 
Let's come out of the remove tool. That's looking, I'd say, a lot better, actually. We've done a pretty good job there of cloning that over. If we look at the before and after, so again, the backslash key on your keyboard, this is before and this is after. Now, arguably, is that better? Is that worse than using generative AI? You've been more directly involved. It still means that part of this beach is not true to what you actually saw, to what's actually there, right? So it depends what's important to you. I think probably the generative AI did a better job than the clone stamp did. But you might want to be more involved in the process. You might be just fully against using AI in your image, in which case you have these other tools at your disposal. Let's take a look at a little bit more of a difficult version of events, because these have been actually fairly straightforward to fix. Let's take a look at something that's going to be pretty difficult to work with. Okay, we're going to take a look at this shot here, where there might be a little bit more that you want to tidy up. This was taken at Imaging Festival at our Burgess Hill store. We were working with our wonderful model Natasha here, but we might want to remove the light from the frame, right? We might want to remove some of the elements in the background. We might want to tie this up. Let's try and do that, even if you wouldn't go that far, just to experiment with how to do something a little bit more, a little bit more difficult. So the first, and I'd say the easiest way to do this within Lightroom is to go back to the remove tool. I think we're gonna look at generative AI and we're actually going to make this reasonably large. So what we would do here, I think, is add to the mask here, right? With a reasonably big brush. In fact, we might even go big enough that it, it gets all the glow from the light. Then we can make the brush a little bit smaller. So I've just clicked once there and add to this mask by just going over these areas with the light stand. There we go, we get that all included. Do you know what, I'll get those bits as well. Now, there's a little bit of shadow on the floor here, so I'm actually gonna select all of that as well and just make sure that I've kind of got every part that I want removed. Great, now we can go ahead and click remove and see how Lightroom's gonna do this. This is, I think, gonna be the easiest way to remove the light while staying in Lightroom. We could take it over to Photoshop where we'd have even more control, but I think for now, this is the best way. Okay, so it's, it's, it's done a pretty good job, right? And if I actually come out of the Remove tab, that's actually incredibly seamless everywhere except where the light was up here. We have got different variations, so let's go ahead and go back into the Remove tab. Let's click on this particular mask. Variation two looks pretty good. Variation three looks pretty good as well, but we do have this kind of glow up here. Now, the way that I would actually go ahead and fix this, I'm gonna come out of the remove tab for a second. Yeah, we've got a bit of a, a bit of a glow up here. I, I like variation one on this as well. So I'm gonna go back to variation one. Now what I'm actually going to do is just make a new mask right up here. And what I want to do is just select as much of this sort of glow as I possibly can. And I'm gonna click remove. And we're gonna try and do that. Lightroom hopefully is gonna fill in the wall so we don't have this kind of glow here. Now variation one has a bit of glow at the top. We could always leave that in. Variation two is a bit better. Variation three is more what I'm looking for, right? It's just the wall without that kind of color cast on it. So, okay, great. That looks, I think, pretty much exactly how I want to do. We've got rid of the light. So now we've just got Natasha in the frame. Okay, let's get rid of this post on the left side, right? We can actually use this tick box here, detect objects, to allow Lightroom to work out what objects we're trying to select with the mask. So I've now got that ticked on. I'm gonna go ahead and just draw over this post. And hopefully what Lightroom's gonna do is work out that I want that post gone and it's actually gonna fill in a bunch of space around the post because it gives it a lot more space to work with actually filling in the areas and working out what should go there and all that kind of stuff. Let's go ahead and click remove. Great, it's done a really good job. So that looks really good. Okay, so the last part we might want to remove is the grate in the background, right? That's going to be pretty difficult to get rid of in Lightroom. And realistically, I think this would be where we would want to take it over to Photoshop if you wanted to get rid of that. Now, I don't hate the gray on the wall, but you know, for the purpose of the tutorial, let's just take this into Photoshop. If you have Photoshop as well, it just gives you a little bit more control and I'll show you how it works over there. So if you do have Photoshop as well, all we have to do is right click on the image, go up to edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop, and it's gonna open up in Photoshop with all of the edits that we've made so far. Take a little, take a little sip of the coffee. While Photoshop, while Photoshop does its thing, it just opens up. Okay, so we've got the image open in Photoshop now. So what we're gonna do is immediately just unlock this bottom layer. I'm gonna press Control J to just duplicate it so that we've got that initial bottom layer that we're not overwriting 
uh, if we don't want to. If we want to go back, it'd be super easy to do that. So what I can do now is take the lasso tool just up here and I'm going to try and select the, uh, the grate. I am going to get a little bit of Natasha's uh, body in as well in the mask just because it's going to make it easier, hopefully, for Lightroom to fill everything in. So again, this is this is a difficult one to fix. There's a bit more to it. But now that we've got that selected, we can go ahead and click Generate. We're going to see kind of what Photoshop is going to do. So it automatically knows that we probably want to use Generative Fill. So it just came up there with the contextual taskbar. So we can click Generate immediately and get that going. And look at that. It's actually done a really, really good job. We've got multiple variations so you can see there, that's pretty good, right? I, I don't mind that at all. So we've got a much smaller grate now. Still trying to fill in a bit of grate because we've got this bit of grate in the middle here. So we probably need to take care of that as well. So let's go back down to the layer just below. So the layer we were just working on. And now I'm going to just try and select this middle part. And then if I hold shift, I can actually add to the mask by drawing another one like so. And now we've got these two bits. Now I'm going to click Generative Fill and Generate. And hopefully Photoshop is actually going to be able to fill in those two areas for us, which will be really quite impressive if that works. And look at that. That is really quite impressive. Variation 1, Variation 2. Variation 3 probably looks the best. Now, is it ideal? Is this a heavy use of AI? Probably. But if we now press Control S to save this, we can close Photoshop and go back to Lightroom where the photo will now be in Lightroom, but with the edits that we've made in Photoshop. So if you want to go all the way to that level, you know, we've now used AI quite significantly within this photo is probably, I mean, you, you would be able to go in without AI and do it. It just would take you a very long time. So it's kind of easier to use AI in this situation. But you've got all those different tools at your disposal within Lightroom. And then if you really need an extra level of control, if you really need to go a little bit further, you can always hop into Photoshop to get that done as well. An interesting one, if I'm honest, because on one hand, like I said at the beginning, it's never been easier to remove things from photos than it is right now. It's very, very straightforward because of the new tools at your disposal, but it comes with a few kind of pros and cons and a few kind of, you know, sometimes it can feel a little bit weird, if I'm honest, to use AI in this way. I'd love to know your thoughts about all of that. When do you feel comfortable using these kinds of tools? When does it make you feel a little bit uncomfortable? Let me know down in the comments. How far would you push it? I don't know if I would go this far, but it's useful to see it. It's useful to play around with it so you know kind of what is available to you. Of course, there's always a list of all the kit we use down in the description for all these photos, all the video stuff as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well because there's new stuff all the time. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.